Well, we are back with another Marvel breakdown. This time we're going to be talking about Episode 6 of Miss Marvel. So if you haven't seen Episode 6 yet, well, I'm about to spoil it, so this is your spoiler warning. And we got a handful of things to talk about today because some shit happened that uh, I really need to talk about. So let's jump right into it. Okay, let's talk about the pacing of this episode. My biggest concern was going to be how they were going to wrap everything up within this episode, especially after, you know, she was in Karachi for two. And it did feel really rushed in the very beginning of her getting back, telling her family about her secret identity. And the thing is about this is that her secret identity is, a, she keeps it a secret. And in the comics, her family does eventually find out. Amira almost gets turned into another inhuman. Her dad knew this entire time. And it just kind of works out in its own. However, in this, she tells everyone, which I mean, I'm okay with. She's, she, it's a family show. She shares everything with her family, which I think will, goes well. And then it jumps right into Kamran and Bruno running away from damage control. And Kamran is using his powers really recklessly because he doesn't know how to use them, of course, which makes sense. But by later in the episode, he knows how to use them, kind of, I guess. But it, it feels weird that he's able to use them just as well as Kamala can, but still kind of out of control. Which makes sense, because, you know, he just got them, how is he going to know how to control them? But I really did like that, you know, the change in the comics about her mom making the costume, because it came full circle in the end after the first episode where her mom made her Hulk costume, her mom now made her Miss Marvel costume. And I like the costume, it's comic accurate, and it looks really nice. I liked when she was running through the city, she was swinging in the lamppost, because it just kind of reminded me of something I'd see out of a comic book, and I thought it would be cooler if we got her in Big Empowers while she was doing that, because that would make more sense. But it still looks cool. I'm still not a fan of her running on those light discs. Uh, but I don't think those will last long, just based on how the show went this episode. Also, Kamala using her powers in this episode seemed a little off because I feel like, she, yeah, she can use them, but she was using them a little too well. Mostly because we haven't seen her use her powers that well this entire season. And we only really got one training montage, and even then, she still wasn't a pro. So I think we needed at least one more episode to really fix this pacing, or maybe two, so that she had more time to train, and more time to really transition between the Karachi storyline with the clandestines and the damage control in Jersey. I thought it was interesting that she got Red Dagger to help with Kamran. Maybe he'll come back, but I'm assuming we'll probably just never see him again. I like how we had the aftermath of Nakia finding out about Kamala's powers, and that she was mad that she never told him, but in reality, it was Kamala was just worried that Nakia wouldn't like her because of her powers, which of course they kind of resolve in the end, and they're still best friends. And then we have Zoe appearing out of nowhere while they're in the school, now knowing Kamala's identity, and I'm like, well, in the comics she does too. And it looks like she'll be more of their friend, just like the comics, because she was her, their bully originally, and then she moved over to becoming friends with them. I really like the planning scene where they were going through and doing the montage of planning, as well as doing the plan at the same time and setting up, because it really helped with the pacing, because in that scene, that pacing made sense. And then it's nice as well, because you had the drawing on the scenes, like we've had with the visual effects throughout the whole show, where they're visually showing stuff with lines and everything on the screen, which I thought was really well done, and I really enjoyed that part of the show. And then we had damage control attacking them, even though she was told not to go in she went in anyways classic villain not listening to their superiors and going right in after that anyways because they think they know what is right which ends up backfiring on them in the long run because they got fired and while they're doing it they, i like how they were leading like our present day stuff to the show so we have tiktok and zoe going live getting people to come in this community to help support miss marvel and tell damage control to fuck right off i really like that part of the episode it's using your social media influence in the real world situations which is something you most likely would see in an actual real, real world situation and while they're running around wearing multiple hoodies and then damage control soldiers are like hey there's multiple of them my first thought was like hey multiple men jamie james mandrox like i just thought mutants right away probably because i'm reading x-men comic right now but that was just the first thought i'm like oh mutant reference at least a really subtle one also, while they're doing all this, even though Comron's powers are technically different from the comics, I like that they still look the same, because it still gives me that comic references that I want to see, because I feel like Miss Marvel is probably the only show that's really shown a lot of the comic book references, and I think that is probably my favorite thing about the show, because I really like the comics, so I love seeing those references throughout the show. I really like when Comron starts attacking the damage control soldiers, that Kamala steps in and protects them, because Kamala's a hero, she's going to make sure that no one gets hurt, no matter what side they're on. And it really showed throughout the rest of the fight where every time Kamran would use an attack against them, Miss Marvel would block it. Or if Damage Control would attack Kamran, Miss Marvel would still block it. And I really like that because it shows her it really shows her heroism in all this. But we get to the triumphant part of the episode where it, you know, this isn't your typical big villain fight. This is, you know, your government organization versus your superhero, which I think is good for Miss Marvel because she is a small hero. She's not a giant cosmic person. She's just this little kid in Jersey. 
which he doesn't really fight all the big villains, which I like. It's good to see because then we could keep it a little more grounded, even with superpowers. But it's cool because we finally get her on the ground and she's like, Embiggen. And she gets her construct and she does Embiggen. But it's not the same as the comics. And this she's doing Embiggen with her construct, which I like to see. But I, I'm i like, why didn't they just do Embiggen? Why didn't they just give her her stretchy powers? Like, that's all you needed to do. Honestly, that's all you needed to do. And it really bothers me because I feel like they could have done that. But the only reason they went with the constructs because it's a little more flashy and it looks nicer. But I'm still... I'm on the fence about it because I want to see her get classic powers, which I still believe they're coming. One way or the other, she will get her classic powers, and this was just a way for them to tie her to Captain Marvel, and we'll see how it goes when we get to the Marvel's movie. And when she was using her powers too, she was literally using them exactly the same way she would use them in the comics with her stretchy powers. And she was catching stuff, she was stretching out the arms with the cosmic constructs. It looked cool, it, it looked cool, but I'm just not a fan. And then Kamran loses control and she traps him in a dome because both her powers seem to cancel each other out because they're both made of the construct, the same type of material I would guess we would use. And then she helps him escape and he later goes on to Red Dagger and I guess he joins the Red Daggers. But, you know, again, probably won't see him again. And I like how Kamran said they'll never accept us before he runs away because it's it links subtle hints to people with powers because even with like in the comics, People don't like mutants, and if you have powers, especially when we had been humans, everyone just automatically assumed they were mutants and didn't like them. The one thing about this episode is it really defined Kamala as the hero of Jersey, which I love because that's who she is, and I cannot wait to see more of her. I just hope whenever we do get a season two, because I'm sure this will stay as a show outside the movies, that she really is that we get more consistent writing in longer episodes, because I feel like we need a longer, more episodes to really blend the story together because this i feel like could have benefited from eight episodes rather than six i don't like the six episode format because it feels like it rushes everything very quickly i don't know the first two episodes started off very strong but the middle two weren't as good but the last one kind of ended it with a bang which was a good thing to see and i like how when she got the miss marvel identity she got it at the end when her father tells her about what her name means and her name means in arabic perfect and then that's exactly what happened in the comics is that her father did the exact same thing he said her name meant perfect but in the show he also said that perfect meant marvel and she's he's like you're our little miss marvel which is a touching moment between father and daughter and i really like to see it and it was a really nice and interesting way with both her mother and her father giving her her costume and her name it had a lot to do with family which was nice because Kamala has a lot to do with her family and her heritage. And I cannot wait to see more of that in the future because I want to learn more. I like I like learning more about her heritage in the comics. And I hope we get that in the next season. Because I doubt they will cover it in the Marvels. And one of the big Easter eggs that we all love to see is her sitting on the lamppost, which is straight out of a comic book cover. Which I think we all knew that when we saw that promo art, we all love to see it. It's probably one of my favorite pictures from this Marvel show. But of course, after everything happens, we do a nice little time jump because that's what shows like to do to kind of move the story along i like how when kamala goes to meet up with bruno and nakia she just kind of walks up with her comic book accurate civilian clothes her big hat on and just her jacket and it just as soon as i saw that i'm like oh that's nice because that's just her look in the comics and it's cool to see it on screen because we got to see it a little earlier in the season as well when they're at the party but when bruno brings her aside and this is the thing that really caught me off guard bruno brings her aside and says she Amir wanted to figure out if he had powers, and in the comics, Amir does. He ends up getting exposed to Terragenesis and gets inhuman powers. He doesn't use them that often, but he has them. So Bruno tells Kamala after he examined his brother and the rest of her family, she re he realized that she has a mutation. And when I heard that, I'm like, well, they're probably just using mutation and be like, hey, mutation is... Mutation is just another word for her in human genes because technically it is a mutation of some sorts. However, while they did that, they played the X-Men 90s animated theme song. And I was like, are you kidding me? I didn't realize this at first. I didn't realize this at all. And then I watched the video, saw it, went to make this video, and I'm like, holy shit, they're going to make her a mutant. And the thing is, I don't know how I feel about this because honestly, it makes sense. It's easy to make her a mutant because... Inhumans and mutants are very similar in a way as they all get their powers. I mean, as they all have weird powers. And Inhumans are a little bit more complicated, so I feel like Marvel's going to keep just mutants so they could just do the X-Men and then just kind of bring in human, bring in Inhuman characters and make them mutants so that's easier for the general public to follow who doesn't read comics. I still kind of have a feeling that they're going to make her Inhuman because through the show they've laid subtle Easter eggs for the Kree. They had the blue hand in the temple. 
They had the power coming from within her. They had last episode when the Norb reached out that they turned into like crystals, which reminded me of Terra Genesis. And I don't know. It just feels like Marvel's trying to play one on us and kind of make us think one thing when they're going to do something else. But at the same time, I feel like they're going to do mutants, make her a mutant just to make everything work and be less complicated for the average viewer. But, but, I really, really, really hope that she still gets her comic book actor powers, and I still think that's going to happen now, because if she ends up being immune, the mutant gene will be activated, and she will get her powers. I'm kind of curious to see how she'll connect with the X-Men, if we get, when we eventually get them, and if she'll go to the Xavier School, or if she'll still completely do her own thing, because in the comics with Inhumans, she does go see the Inhumans for a bit, but still stays in Jersey to do her own thing. But, you know, we got to talk about the post credit scene because it's Marvel. We're going to get a post credit scene. I knew they were going to connect it to the Marvels, either with a Carol Danvers cameo, with her coming to see Kamala, or something else. And we got something else. So Kamala is sitting in her room, and all of a sudden the bangle starts to light up. And it's like a weird, you know, cosmic energy coming off of it. And then all of a sudden she, she kind of disappears, and something flies in her closet. My first thought was like, holy shit, holy shit, did... Did she just polymorph? Then when Carol shows up, because in the comics, when she originally turned in, got her power, she turned into Carol Danvers. But, of course, they're not going to do that, because why would they? So Carol shows up, and she's kind of looking around the room. She sees her picture of herself, and she sees all the different Captain Marvels along the wall. And then she realizes, ah, oh, shit. She's not where she's supposed to be. So, obviously, the bangle has somehow swapped places with Carol and Kamala, which I don't. we don't really understand how that works. Because, obviously, like I said before, the bangle is connected to the Kree. It's 100% connected to the Kree, because why else would it transport Cat Marvel here? So Cat Marvel is probably doing something in Kree space, fucked with an artifact, and it swapped places with them. Now, I think Carol's going to be on Earth, she's going to go to S.W.O.R.D., she's going to run into Monica Rambeau, and then they're going to both head out to go find Kamala, because you cannot leave a teenager in space. And on top of it, Carol looks different. She has a new suit, her hair is a little different. But we've only really ever seen her in Captain Marvel, Endgame, and Shang-Chi. So we really don't know Captain Marvel that much, and I cannot wait for the Marvel show because I'm hoping it'll expand on her character, and the new suit looks pretty good, and the new look in general looks pretty good. So I am looking forward to that. I am also just looking forward to seeing how Kamala connects to the story and where her place will be, because she, in the end, she's going to get to meet her idol, the one she looks up to, and I am looking forward to that. This whole story has got me intrigued, the mutants, the Marvels, everything. I have no idea where they're going with this, and we're going to have to wait a while till we get to see it, but... I'm looking forward to it. What did you guys think? I want to know your opinion. I want to know if I missed any Easter eggs that I should have seen because I feel like I did. What do you feel about her possibly not being an Inhuman? And are you looking forward to the Marvels movie? Because I'm somewhat looking forward to it. I was never a big fan of the Cat Marvel movie, but the Marvels movie has got me intrigued and I am looking forward to seeing what they do with it. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more and, you know, make sure you follow me on my other social medias because I am always talking about other things. My TikTok has a lot more than my YouTube at the moment, but hey, I'm still doing it and I stream Sunday, Mondays, and Wednesdays. So come check me out on there and we can have a conversation about the game I'm playing or some movies we all love to talk about, Marvel, DC, all that fun stuff. So I hope you guys have a lovely day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you guys later.